Hello everybody and welcome back to Prehistoric Kingdom with Dev Diary for September. So there's a lot of cool things that are in this Dev Diary compared to the last one, which was also a really good one. But this is getting giving us better insight into both ontogeny and update 12's features. There's no Apatosaurus or Brontosaurus featured in this Dev Diary, but Ankylosaurus certainly does show up and a lot of new stuff regarding the babies and Tarbosaurus' redesign. So let's get straight into it. So update 12 is chugging along as the last pieces of art start to come through. They are being more focused on developing tutorials and getting the update finished. And we can expect a trailer in October announcing its release date, showing the main features and dinosaurs in action. But now, however, let's look at some new content. After the reveal of the green Ankylosaurus last month, it's time to show off another skin featuring dark stripes and a yellow body. This Anki is loud and proud with its striking contrast. Carnivore, carnivores better beware. And it looks really good. I love this design. So I like how it's got golden veins, pretty much. And uh, yeah, the, it, it almost reminds me of the Euplocephalus from Jurassic World Evolution with that sort of colored design where you had a darker overall, but these streaks of yellow um, going through. And honestly, I really love this, this skin. The, it looks great. The green one looked great too. Excited to see what the third skin's gonna look like. So after much speculation, the long-awaited rustic theme will be arriving in Update 12. Inspired by US National Parks, this building set makes heavy use of woods and sustainable materials to achieve its vernacular look. Taking a peek at the construction options, you'll primarily find aged materials that look like they've seen a thing or two. In order to perfectly capture our references, the wooden walls have been given extra 3D geometry to truly make them pop out. And yeah, this looks really good. And <laughs> Funny enough, this almost reminds me of when I was speculating for Planet Zoo, a Pacific Northwest pack, and this would be sort of the design of the building materials that would be featured in that, sort of that uh, log cabin, ski lodge looking stuff, the like uh, National Park looking designs, the cobblestone walls, um, and there's also on the next slide something else that was very important to that update. The next next one then. So of course the rustic theme wouldn't be complete without its decorations. We've got some gorgeous wood carvings and yeah this one looks really fantastic. Reminds me of that fossil of the fighting dinosaurs between a Velociraptor and a Protoceratops. Very famous fossil, I'm glad it was able to be recreated here. So there's some wood carvings, some lamps, some signposts and also giant hollow logs for small animals to walk through. That's pretty cool. I think that's made from the actual trunk of a re of a redwood tree. To be able to fit a Leolmosaur in there. And here we go, the coastal map. So this is sort of what I was imagining for the Pacific Northwest pack for Planet Zoo if it were to happen. Um, getting a full-on British Columbia, um, Vancouver look. But uh, yeah, let's see what this has to say. Welcome to Redwood Valley, sat on the American West Coast. This mountainous region is home to a variety of coastal foliage, like its namesake, the Redwoods. Featuring a graveled coastline and varied terrain, this map features tired areas of flat land, or wait, no, tiered, oh yes, yeah, tiered, <laughs> tiered areas of flat land with slopes connecting each of its plateaus. A fitting environment for many North American dinosaurs. Though they're still finalizing the layout and density of foliage, we can get a rough idea of how this location will end up feeling below. Well, basically the images here. So the coastal biome itself is being updated with new trees, improved underbrush and additional flora such as rhododendron and lily of the valley. As it's currently one of the oldest biomes in the game, the upgrade, the upgrade will be pretty transformative. And yeah, that looks fantastic. Uh, I'm really excited to see what it's going to start looking like in its redesigns. But yeah, the map looks really good right now. So there are also some theme updates, starting with the basic theme, they'll be adding two recolorable wall styles, raw wooden planks and wood look tiles. These materials are especially great for more low key builds offering a nice and simple aesthetic. Alongside a new stone material, polished terrazzo, the modern theme will be getting an extra coat of paint with updated wood materials. Yeah that looks really good. <laughs> and there's also like a little um, decoration here with that polished terrazzo. And a Stegosaurus Hedge um, topiary. 
yeah, it's a topiary, not a hedge. Um, one of that's hinting to Stegosaurus's um, close release, perhaps, perhaps in a future update. Not sure, but Stegosaurus is definitely coming because it's Stegosaurus, right? But uh, yeah, so that's enough for those theme. Coming in update 12 is a much needed standardization of our official prefabs with fresh designs. It's important to us that without interacting with the workshop, players can access a bunch of easy to use prefabs for all themes. So what's changing? For the guest centric prefabs, there'll be a wide array of structure layouts with styling available in every theme. Their foundations will be consistently sized too, depending on the building. This means that if you're thinking of swapping your basic restaurant for a tropical restaurant, it'll fit perfectly, easy peasy. As for logistics and park services, e.g. the loading bay, staff center, etc., we only plan to release basic prefabs for now, but we can revisit them if community demand is high enough. Lots of work was done prototyping ontogeny in September. We're making good progress with animation scaling and have started on getting the animal entities smooth, smoothly transitioning as they grow. As we're going for a real-time growth system, we've, we've been taking a look at bone proportions and seeing how much of the animals we can change before they begin to stretch. Thankfully, it's looking good. Even with our rudimentary tests, watching these gangly little beasties walk around and eat next to their adult counterparts is truly something. We've got a good pipeline going and are excited to tackle the challenges ahead of us. We seriously cannot wait to get them more polished and show you all. So below are some examples of the current growth stages for the T-Rex as we've just seen there, and the Triceratops which is a new baby that we have not yet seen. So <laughs> he, looks, he looks adorable. So we don't have any altern alternate normal maps for babies yet, so keep in mind that things like ridges, bumps and kerosene will be toned down in the future. We've also got to look at an adult Triceratops next to a juvenile, slowly growing its horns in and eventually looking as magnificent as the adult next to it. But yeah, some of, the, some of those um, babies are looking really good and the ontology system seems to be working quite well from what I can see in those images. So when we spoke of ontogeny earlier this year, we mentioned that there'd be one baby skin per animal. Today, we're pleased to confirm that alternate species will receive their own texture and ontogeny rather than sharing them. In most cases, this will be as simple as changing colour palette, but for something like Triceratops Crossus and Horridus, they'll have unique designs to better transition into their adult colorations, and you can even see that their horn nubs are shaped differently. One of the other cool things about ontogeny is sexual dimorphism. Although included in all species, this feature will be observed, best observed in animals with horns or tusks, like mammoths. By stopping growth stages a little early, we're able to give animals a more gracile look, depending on the sex. All in all, a lot has changed since the last time we tackled ontogeny. After all, we couldn't have baby tyrannosaurs having meteorite flashbacks, could we? Yeah, I remember, I remember when I first saw the original baby T-Rex. It looked so shocked. But now we've got um, a much better looking baby T-Rex. Really does remind me of prehistoric kingdoms, not uh, prehistoric kingdoms, prehistoric planets. We're already in prehistoric kingdom. But uh, yeah, it re reminds me of prehistoric planets quite well. And yeah, the eyes look a lot less surprised than they did in the past. So alternate species. When creating our animals, we often look, like to include alternate species that wouldn't make it into the game on their own. They help add variety, but can often feel like approximations by sharing an identical shape to the animal they were based on. As you can see, Tarbosaurus will look quite different from Tyrannosaurus now, especially when it comes to bulk. This is a huge improvement over its current in-game appearance, where it appears more like a soft T-Rex with a dewlap. Excitingly, we'll be extending this philosophy to every alternate species in the game, making anatomical adjustments where possible. In the case of animals like Camarasaurus, we especially look forward to making the silhouette of all three species unique. Yeah, you can really see the difference between the two there. Like, T-Rex is a much heftier animal. A lot more bulk, whereas Tarbosaurus is a bit lighter on it, on its frame. But uh, Tarbosaurus is also getting the update where it's going to have the lips. Like, the T-Rex got that update just after update 10? Yeah. Well, it was update 10, wasn't it, they got that? It was either update 10 or update 11 that it received that change. I cannot remember. Actually, yeah, it was update 11, wasn't it? Yeah. 
Yeah, so Tarbosaurus is getting that. It's also getting a changed head shape and overall build. So, yeah, I look forward to that. And I can't wait to see what all the other alternate species will have. I do have um, one suggestion. Like, we've got Smilet on Populate and Fatalis, but we don't actually have Gracilis. So I wonder if they'd actually add um, Smiled on Gracilis at all in the future. As it, I mean... They don't have to, but I just think it's a bit weird having one smiled on missing. Unless there's more, I'm not sure. But, uh, yeah. That's just my suggestion for now. But, uh, yeah, everything's looking fantastic. So, that is everything in Prehistoric Kingdom September Dev Diary for 2024. Lots of exciting stuff. The babies are looking fantastic in their all different growth stages. I do like how the T-Rex, when it as it grows the um like the downy feathers just slowly disappears and i'm glad i'm really glad about the new rustic theme and coastal map those are looking really nice and yeah let me know what your thoughts are on this dev diary and the features within it below in the comments and if you enjoy content like this i do would recommend you subscribe and maybe leave a like if you enjoyed this video as for now i'll see you all in the next one Bye bye